जय श्री कृष्ण सो आई हैव नोन सपना हु इज नाउ आफ्टर मैरिज नोन एज पिया सिंस शी वॉज अ लिटल गर्ल आई नो हर पेरेंट्स एंड ऑल्सो न्यू हर ग्रैंड पेरेंट्स एंड आई वुड ऑफ इन विजिट बैंगलोर वेर आई सो दिस लवली चाइल्ड ग्रोइंग अप वी कनेक्टेड मच लेटर when we took a trip together uh, to the south of india and visited some beautiful temples and uh, some lovely scenes and uh, then again we connected a little later on a closer basis she would speak about herself and what she was going through and as she was training to be a psychologist she would speak about uh, she would naturally analyze the situation clinically and somehow i would always add a touch of having to have faith having to believe that things would eventually work out in the in their best way possible maybe it is not what the way the way we want it but in the long run maybe we would realize that that was the best way i would say this to her she listened listened patiently and i think believed in what i said and today but why am i telling you her story let me let her tell you herself in her own words today she is a clinical psychologist she has passed the test and she's a wife and mother of a beautiful child who you will see in the pictures so i give you i call her sapna pia Nathani I don't have an inspirational story but I'm definitely inspired by a lot of people in my life I am who I am because of my spiritual mentors guides and parents My life feels like a puzzle sometimes pieces here and there some fitting others not fitting but with time for me they all seem to come together My life story is very ordinary Here it is. I was born and raised in Bangalore to a Sindhi family. My parents are very spiritually inclined, and when I was younger, I didn't enjoy the daily arti, and was usually asleep during Satnara and pujas. I prayed only when I needed something from God. I dreamed of being able to read minds, and was very interested in pursuing psychology. But everyone in my family did commerce, so I eventually did the same. During my teenage years I experienced an identity crisis and had questions on life and death. My parents had a book on Dada Vaswani and it helped me to understand what suicide does to one's soul. It helped me to understand the purpose and meaning of my life. This was it. This book changed my life. Since then I have been in pursuit of going beyond psychology and looking for meaning in life and death. A few years later my spiritual mentor Shakunandi entered my life and I was able to relate to her words and teachings interacting with her helped me stay connected to my spiritual side going back to my education after my parents spent lots of money on my business degree I went back to studying psychology a lot of people in my family shared their disappointments for wasting my father's money I still pursued psychology and my higher studies took me to US where my husband supported me to get a PhD in psychology. Doing a PhD was one of the toughest things I ever had to do. During my studies, my younger brother passed away after struggling with cancer for 8 to 9 months. He was only 21 years old. It was hard. I was angry with God. How dare you I asked. I forgot about God for a few years. 
refused to go to the temple to pray. After four years of slogging and long distance, I finally completed my degree. Next, I had to pass a very big exam to get licensed and work as a psychologist. <clears throat> I began to pray again, asking God to help me to pass. Now, this prayer was tied to wanting something in return. You know, I was eight months pregnant when I attempted my exam. I failed my exam and this was the biggest failure, but it taught me so much. One month later, I had my baby. I was in a lot of physical pain from the surgery and emotional pain from my exam. My ego was shot down. I was once again searching for life's answers. We were all in the middle of a pandemic. For me, I had a newborn baby. My mom, who had come to help me from India with the delivery, was unfortunately stuck in the US. And my husband found out that he could possibly lose his job. I felt defeated from all sides. This could mean that we might have to return back to India. There was a lot going on and nothing was making sense. My spiritual practices became deeper. It was not tied to wanting something in return from God. I accepted my limitations, which was very hard for me. I feel blessed to be able to attend satsang, which helped me to understand the reason for my pain. From satsangs to self-reflection and meditation, I started to realize that I was living a self-centered life. I was praying so I could pass the exam. And passing my exam meant putting my three-month-old in daycare and getting back to work. But I'm so glad I failed my exam. I came to realize my purpose in life again. And my meditation gave me clarity. My soul yearned to take care of my son. I chose to stay home and take care of him. I gave up my job for one year. Slowly, the problem started to clear away. Just like the rain clouds start to move and open up the sky, allowing sunlight to shine. My mother got a ticket to go back home. My husband found a good job and I finally passed my exam. It was an intense one year. Needless to say, I am enjoying motherhood. I am a student of psychology but the only thing that helped me during the pandemic were the satsangs. These satsangs were organized by Ma Shakun. It was this thread that helped me to move on to the next day. The pieces of my la- the pieces of the puzzle started coming together. I was looking for a part-time job so I could balance both family and work. I couldn't find something that paid me sufficiently or matched my family's needs. The good news is that a mentor reached out to me and encouraged me to start my own private private practice. I could get paid sufficiently had his counsel and support from years of experience and I had to work only one to two days a week. This fit nicely with what I was looking for. You know, I can balance my duties as a mom, wife and contribute to my family. The bonus being that my long-term dream of starting my own private practice is coming true. My business degree will finally be put to use. My inspiration has always been my mentors and my parents. I'll be starting my private practice soon. My spiritual mentor gave me the name of this practice, Psychology and Beyond, for it was something beyond psychology that helped me through all the difficult times in my life. I am grateful for psychology and everything beyond that, my gurus, scriptures, parents and family. My only hope is that God keeps coming back to my life every time I forget him and I hope I pay heed to those gentle calls. I learned that through life's ups and downs, it's important to have faith and keep on moving. Problems never go away, but if you're in constant communication with God, it'll help us go along the right path. And who knows, we might end up achieving what is truly meant for us. Trust that what happens has a reason. Maybe it doesn't make sense to you now, but when the puzzle comes together, it definitely will.